The Good Fight, a spin-off of CBS All Access's phenomenally popular courtroom drama, The Good Wife, has been renewed for a fifth season. Christine Berinsky of Mamma Mia! Fame reprises her role as liberal law firm partner Diane Lockhart in The Good Fight. After seven seasons on The Good Wife, Diane joins an African-American-owned business that is gaining recognition for taking on police brutality claims when her retirement plans are ruined by a financial crisis. The Good Fight has covered various current subjects, such as the Me Too movement and alt-right politics as well as some more character centric stories throughout the course of four seasons. In today's video we're going to discuss everything about The Good Fight Season 5 and everything you need to know. But before we get into the video don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel with notifications turned on so you don't miss any of the new videos that we post. What is the show about? The Good Fight is a legal drama produced by CBS for its streaming services CBS All Access. It's the first original scripted series on CBS All Access. The series is a spin-off and sequel to The Good Wife which was created by Robert King, Michelle King, and Phil Alden Robinson. The first season consists of 10 episodes, with the first episode showing on CBS and the remaining 9 episodes showing on CBS All Access. The series was originally set to begin in May 2017, but it was pushed up after CBS had postponed the premiere of its new series Star Trek Discovery due to production problems. After a major financial swindle destroys the reputation of her goddaughter, Maya, Rosie Leslie, and Diane's funds, the series follows Christine Berinsky as Diane Lockhart as she loses her job and joins Luca Quinn, Cush Jumbo, at one of the Chicago's most prestigious legal firms. Berinsky, Leslie, Jumbo, Erica Tazel, Sarah Steele, Justa Bartha, Delroy Lindo, Nyambi Nyambi, Michael Bowman, and Andre McDonald appear in the series, which also has recurring characters Paul Guilfoyle and Bernadette Peters. Robert King, Michelle King, Ridley Scott, David W. Zucker, Liz Glotzer, Brooke Kennedy, and Allison Scott are executive producers, with Phil Alden Robinson producing and co-writing the first film. The release date for Season 5 According to Deadline, the first episode of The Good Fight Season 5 will premiere on June 24th on the streaming service Paramount Plus, with a weekly release schedule for the season's 10 episodes. Thursdays are the ideal nights to watch for that delectable legal drama since The Good Fight is one of Paramount Plus's top shows. The season is expected to wrap up towards the end of August, making it a tasty summer series. Because The Good Fight production was momentarily halted owing to the global health situation, Season 5 will premiere more than a year after Season 4 aired. As a result, Season 4 was shortened by 3 episodes from its original 10 episode run. Fortunately for fans, this will not be the case for Season 5, which will consist of a full season. The cast of Season 5 While the majority of the usual cast will return to The Good Fight, there will be a few changes. Cush Jumbo, who plays Luca Quinn, and Delroy Lindo, who portrays Adrian Bozeman, will reprise their roles in The Good Fight, but only in a limited manner. We couldn't be more grateful that Delroy and Cush will be returning in Season 5 to finish off their arcs. Series co-creators Michelle King and and Robert King said in a statement by a TV line. We adore the actors and their characters and are delighted to give the audience a chance to say a proper goodbye. Due to the departure of two regulars from the series, two new characters have been added to the mix. Mandy Patinkin will play Hall Wagner, a guy with no legal training who gets himself engaged nevertheless. Charmaine Bingwa will betray Carmen Moyo, a formidable lawyer. The King's told Deadline, We're happy that Charmaine is bringing her great talents to the good fight ensemble. We knew we'd discover our Carmen the instant we saw her addition and we can't wait to start writing for her in Season 5. Plot of The Good Fight Season 5 Season 5 of The Good Fight has a lot to make up for, as various storyline threads were left dangling due to the global health situation, cutting Season 4 short. Season 5 will conclude the story of veteran characters Adrian and Luca, who recently left the legal office, and then focus on Diane's reaction to the ship. Diane is forced to examine whether it's right for her to help Liz operate an African-American legal business. The logline reads, by deadline, at the same time when Mandy Patton Kins newcomer Hall Wagner starts his own courtroom in the back of a store, he'll get embroiled with Marissa and the firm. According to the deadline, he has no legal standing but is taken far too seriously by the people. Carmen, played by Charmin Bingwa, the other newbie, will be joining the firm in the absence of Adrian and Luca and will highlight her expertise in working with the firm's most problematic clients. Season 4 Ending Explained Despite what the episode's title, The Gang Discoveries Who Killed Jeffrey Epson, implied, Diane Lockhart, played by Christine Berinsky, and company didn't actually get to the bottom of sexual predator Jeffrey Epstein's death in The Good Fight's early Season 4 finale. In the season finale, U.S. Attorney Wilbur Dinkin, played by Adam Heller, hired Liz, played by Audra McDonald, and the firm to look into the financier's death and figure out what happened. Epstein died by suicide in his jail cell while awaiting trial for sex trafficking charges last
last August, however some believe it wasn't suicide. Unfortunately, this case leads Reddick, Bozeman, and Lockhart down a conspiracy theory filled rabbit hole that includes a mysterious envelope containing a key and message Epstein wrote about something called BUD. The writers made this up for the episode and a very real 70s sci-fi novel called Space Revelations. Marissa, played by Sarah Steele, and Jay, played by Nyambi Yami, eventually track down the mystery to Epstein's private island in the Virgin Islands, where they discovered nothing. As Marissa and Jay were leaving the island, the camera plunged deep inside the island's temple, revealing Epstein's brain had been frozen and stored there. Meanwhile, Julius Kane, played by Michael Boatman, made a statement to the Inspector General concerning Memo 618, which resulted in his arrest for judicial bribery as retaliation. Diane, Adrian, and Liz attempted but failed to purchase their way out of the firm's agreement with STR Lori. Michelle and Robert King, co-creators of The Good Fight, talked to EW about the unplanned finale, how the Epstein tale relates to the Memo 618 conspiracy from Season 4, and whether they want to tackle the epidemic on Good Fight or Evil. When you found out Episode 7 would be the season finale, did you go back in and re-edit to make it function as one? Robert King. Robert King says, We shot 8 episodes for 4 days. We combed through the material from Episode 8 to see what would provide more definition to the year's primary threat, which was Memo 618. As a result, the Julius Cain sequences, there are three of them, were moved from Episode 8 to Episode 7. The meeting with the Inspector General, for example, followed by Julius' arrest and arrangement alongside Diane. There were three sequences from the 8th episode. In fact, if you look attentively, you'll notice that the outfits don't match, which we just put up with since we believed it was more appropriate for the season. In moving these scenes over, did you end up cutting something else out of 407 to make those fit? Robert replied, No, but Episode 7 was always going to be quick plotting, like too much information pouring in and then everyone running through all all these ideas at the end, it was all going to be edited faster. As a result, we may have edited a little shorter for that reason, but I don't recall any sequences being eliminated. How did the powers that be react when you told them you wanted to do an episode about Epstein's death? Was there any pushback? The video film we received from NBC which shows Trump and Epstein meeting was the biggest concern in my opinion. We have to be quite cautious. Originally, there was a scenario in which a lip reader was used to translate what was happening. If it came down to interpretation, that would have been acceptable legally, but NBC objected, so we went back to the drawing board and invented this cheerleader who was present at the time and is now in her late 50s. Liz and company go down quite a long rabbit hole. How much of that episode is based on fact versus things you came up with? Robert replies, the hairdresser and the envelope with the key are the true fictitious additions because everything about the envelope is made up and leads people into rabbit holes. But it's true that 4chan was the first to publicize Epstein's death. The conspiracy theories that his grave is empty are all part of the Reddit and 4chan conspiracy theories. Even the final disclosure which is based on Epstein's wish, is based on his want. He was trying to figure out how to perform exactly what is shown in the end. And everything you need to know about it, along with Season 4 Explained. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe so you never miss any of our new and upcoming content. Thanks for watching.